This is going to be a step-by-step -step walkthrough for an all-survivors playthrough of Dead Rising on a fresh new game file all the way through to overtime mode. There will be no cutscenes and it will not be 100% comprehensive for things like prestige point stickers, but it will kill all the psychopaths and save all the survivors. In the introduction you have an opportunity to take pictures while flying to the mall. I would highly suggest you take all 30 pictures as your battery is refreshed once you reach the mall. This is all free PP, so do not be stingy with your photographs. None of the photographs are worth a ton of PP, but the highlights are the guy on the car being dragged off and attacked, the gas station blowing up, and the woman being pushed off the roof by a zombie and her corpse afterwards. If you take all 30 photographs, you could easily get at least 3000 PP here, which puts a significant chunk towards your level 2. In this introductory sequence, you can rack up a lot of free PP by taking 29 photographs while barely putting a dent in your 72 hours in the mall. Grab the two bats and the bag of chips on your left as a zombie deterrent if they come after you, but don't actively seek out kills. It's simply not worth your time. You can snap a few photographs on your way to the stairs. The most effective way to maximize your photos is to stand on the stairs, use the banister as a barrier, and take photographs of the horde of zombies from a high angle. The most I've gotten is around 1700 per photograph, but you will more than likely get around 5 to 700 on average. Anything above 1000 should be considered great, and you should try to get as many of those as possible. Take as many photographs as you can before the zombies start to swarm you, and then run to the bottom of the stairs, jump over the banister, and run to the other staircase. And then you repeat this step until you have one battery charge left. It is very important that you have at least one battery charge left. I believe the exit trigger is simply a height threshold, so if you go too high, for instance by jumping while on the stairs, you'll exit the area so you have to be careful of that. Once you've taken your 29 photographs, leave. Now the first thing you're going to want to do right out the gate is you want to grab the two coffee creamers in the safe room. They look like 4 liter jugs of chocolate milk, or you know, 1 gallon jugs if you're from America. Then when you leave, you want to go left and find Natalie Meyer and talk to her with Circle. Run back towards the safe room when she joins up and she'll be reunited with her husband. Use your last photograph to take a picture of them when they are hugging for 5,000 to 10,000 PP depending on photo quality. Now just get them back to the safe room by having them follow you and then re-enter it. If you take good photographs in both sections, you can be level 4 at this point in the game. Now you want to leave the safe room and go down the elevator on the right side. You want to smash the mannequin by throwing it into the wall or racks and pick up the mannequin torso. If you had a bonus inventory slot from leveling up, you can grab a second mannequin torso here as well. Now move on through the warehouse. You'll get a cutscene here where a gun is forced into your inventory. Don't worry too much about it, you can just dump your ammo on the way to the next area. After leaving that area, turn right and go into Cam's camera and refill your batteries for 30 more photographs. Then you'll want to go up the stairs on the right side and turn left into the Colombian Roastmasters coffee shop. Put one coffee creamer into the blender, then grab an orange juice from the cooler beside it and put it into the blender as well. This makes a quick step. Repeat this process again. You should now have two quick steps, a mannequin torso or two, and either a handgun or an empty inventory slot. Now you're going to want to look over the railing and find the awning that has a katana. Jump over and pick it up if you have inventory. If you don't, change the handgun and swap it for the katana. Remember this series of steps of getting the coffee creamers from the safe room, refilling your batteries at Cam's camera, making quick steps in Columbia Rose Masters, and getting the katana because it will be repeated a lot of times throughout the early part of this playthrough. Prioritize using the mannequin torso for now, but don't go crazy. The mannequin torso has more durability than the katana. Follow the arrow through the park and into the food court. You'll encounter Carlito and you'll have another gun placed into your inventory. Grab whatever you dropped. You can grab a wine here for a quick heal if you were damaged getting to the food court, and then you're going to want to run up the left side. You'll find some crates and you'll want to climb them to get to the second level. Taking out Carlito is actually deceptively simple. You'll want to move forward, tank a hit, Use one of your quick steps to run him down and then bash him with the katana or the mannequin torso. I personally prefer the katana here, but both are close to the same effectiveness. You might be able to stunlock him by simply mashing attack. If you don't catch him or he counter kicks you, run away and use another quick step since there are ingredients to make more in the food court. Replace one quick step by combining two wines in the blender in the coffee shop in the food court and then follow Brad. Try not to have either of your weapons break at this point. If one is flashing, switch to the other. Do your best not to let them break. Follow Brad towards the entrance plaza. Try to juke zombies as opposed to killing them. You want to save your weapon charges for as long as you can. If you take damage, you can chug an orange juice from the shop on the right near the exit. 
Follow Brad again until you meet with Dr. Barnaby and you'll now be left to your own devices for a little bit. You have a lot of distance to cover here so I usually use a quick step just to speed it up. You want to run up the escalator into the front of the entrance plaza on the second level and go into the Sinister Read and pick up the World News Book from the back of the shop. This book increases your PP from survivor related activities by 25%. Take a right outside of the Sinister Reed and go around the ring and stop in the middle to take a picture of the Willamette Bee. Then you'll want to continue on and take a picture of the fox cutout outside of Robska Digital. Keep going until you see the ticky on the right side, then take a picture of the fox cutout. Don't worry too much about getting 100% for the PP stickers, just take a picture and move on. Time's kind of of the essence at this point. Keep moving forward until you find a horde of zombies. Kill as many of them as you can, but again, don't let your weapons break and enter the store called In The Closet. Run to the back of the store and turn left to find a survivor. Move the boxes out of his way and talk to him. After he joins you, give him whatever weapon is weakened the most. For me it was the mannequin torso. Now it would be really great if we could just run Bill from the entrance plaza to Paradise Plaza, but the shutter is down until the second day, so we have to go the long way around through Alfresco Plaza, the food court, the park, and then through Paradise Plaza to the warehouse and safe room. Now you want to run back to Alfresco Plaza with Bill, run down the escalator and grab an umbrella and use it to clear a path for Bill. Use your umbrella to get through the other umbrellas in Alfresco Plaza, grab a new umbrella and use it to clear through the rest of the area, enter the food court again. Tell Bill to wait in the corner by the door you just entered and go take some photographs of the Willamette Crossing food court sign, the cardboard cutout of the cowboy, the bull with the knife and fork sign, the big chef with Chris written under it, and all the signs for all the stores in the food court. Kill some time killing zombies or mixing a quick step or two until Otis calls you about two survivors barricaded in Alfresca Plaza. Run back to Alfresca Plaza and send Bill to exile in the hardware store on the left side. Grab a lead pipe if you don't have any weapons left. If you still have a katana and mannequin torso, just send Bill to wait in the hardware store. Run towards the barricade on the left side and break it apart by picking up a piece and smashing it. Beat Bert's head with the lead pipe or punch him. You can unequip your weapon by pressing up on the d-pad until he calms down. It should take about 5 hits. Talk to him and convince him to follow you. Aaron will also follow you. Give Aaron a lead pipe or the katana mannequin torso and trade the other item you have for Bert's fresh baseball bat. Lead them back to the hardware store, pick up Bill, and leave the area. After you enter, tell the group to wait in the corner by the doors of Alfresca Plaza and grab some wine and give it to Bert to refill his health after his beating. You have a bit of time to kill, so kill some zombies and take some pictures or make another quick step. You should get another message from Otis shortly saying there's a crying woman in Alfresco Plaza where you just were. Enter Alfresco Plaza again. Tell Aaron, Bert, and Bill to wait in a corner at the hardware store so they don't get themselves killed. Grab a few lead pipes from the rack and go find Leah. She's in the jewelry store to the right side. You need to talk to her a lot of times and then get her to climb over the counter herself. Clear any zombies that wander in with a lead pipe and then carry Leah. This part can be kind of annoying because you'll most likely have to call Leah, which triggers Aaron, Burton, and Bill to also come to you. Pick up Aaron, Burton, and Bill on the way back and go back to the food court with Leah. Use this opportunity to heal anyone who's damaged with wine from the food court and head back towards the safe room through the park. You need to be fairly quick here as the longer you take the higher risk you run of it turning into night and the convicts coming out. The convicts are killable with your current setup by exploiting trees and park benches, but it is very easy for your survivors to be killed here due to clumsy AI. I found the easiest way was just to hug the right wall all the way to Paradise Plaza as there's a lower concentration of zombies there. You shouldn't encounter the convicts if you've been following the guide reasonably. You have quite a large buffer since I intentionally made this guide a lot more time friendly. The lower part of Paradise Plaza is more infested with zombies so I like to go above and take a detour to heal anyone damaged at the orange juice cooler in the coffee shop. You'll also encounter Kent here from the cut from the same cloth scoop. Tell your posse to wait in the Colombian Roastmasters and take photographs of Kent. If you're fast, you can get a 10,000 PP bonus for taking a picture of him when he does his flying kick against a zombie. If you run out of battery, you can just head down to Cam's camera and get a recharge, then head back. Once you're done with Kent, head back to the safe room with everyone. It will probably turn to night while you're in the warehouse just before getting into the elevator if you were fast with Kent. Getting these four survivors back safely is pretty critical for leveling up, which definitely makes the game a lot easier. Enter the safe room and finish a temporary agreement case, and then you're on your own until the next case starts at 6 in the morning. I would strongly suggest you sleep on the green bench and save your game, especially if you're trying for an all-survivors outcome.
There are a few optional unlisted scoops to do, but the only one we're gonna do right now is rescuing Sophie. It's not hard, but it can be a bit of a crapshoot. If you haven't already, I strongly suggest saving right here. From the security room, do the steps to get a standard loadout of grabbing the coffee creamers, heading down to the warehouse, smashing two mannequins, grabbing the two torsos, recharging your batteries at Cam's camera, mixing two quick steps, and grabbing a katana. Now head for Leisure Park, where you'll get a cutscene of convicts in a jeep killing a survivor. There are really two strategies that you can go for here. Don't kill the convicts, or kill the convicts. To rescue Sophie while not killing the convicts, what I do is run a fair distance into the park and locate Sophie. Then I'll burn a quick step to reach her and talk to her. Once I do talk to her, I tell her to run to the door to Paradise Plaza. Then I try and distract the convicts as best I can while running back myself. If you're lucky, the convicts will be on the other side of the park and won't even bother you. You can grab Sophie by the hand and lead her around if you think that's easier, but to me it didn't work that well. Option 2 is killing the convicts. This requires a bit of luck, but it's easy enough. If the convicts get stuck on a tree or other obstacle, you can completely decimate them with the katana. Use a quick step, close the distance, and kill the driver. The second passenger will move to the driver's seat and you can kill him as well. Now you just have to kill the gunner, and you've got a free 9000 PP and you don't have to deal with the convicts until they respawn tomorrow night. Locate Sophie after this and bring her back to Paradise Plaza. She's often very far away, so it can be annoying to find her. Same as always, run up the stairs to make it back easier and safer to the security room. Take a pit stop at the Colombian Roastmasters and heal Sophie with orange juice or yourself if you're damaged. Then just fight your way back to the warehouse and up to the security room. Once you get back to the security room, it's a good opportunity to save. Take this as another opportunity to get two coffee creamers for quick steps. Things are about to get a little dicey. I would strongly suggest being at least level 10 at this point and having 4 quick steps and 2 katanas or 2 mannequin torsos or some combination of those before Otis calls. Once you get back to Paradise Plaza, you'll get a call from Otis telling you about the Space Rider roller coaster in Wonderland Plaza. It's next to the food court, so head back there. You can burn a quick step or two to get through the park easier and safer if the convicts are still alive since you can remake them at the food court by mixing 2 wines together. When you enter Wonderland Plaza, you can head to the washrooms and save if you want. Otherwise, head up the stairs on the left side and approach the control console and you'll get a cutscene with Adam the Clown. Adam the Clown can be lethal and it's quite likely you will die. If you do die, and you didn't save up to this point, you can restart the game with your stored levels and repeat this guide until you successfully return to this point in the story. I died the first time attempting making this guide by getting hit by Adam and being thrown into the Space Rider's path and stun locks, so you should be aware of that. I strongly suggest you stay as far away from the Space Rider as possible. Otherwise, Adam is probably the hardest psychopath in the game because you are so weak when you face him. If you get caught in a spinning attack, he can take you from 100 to 0, so you gotta be very wary of that. The easiest way to avoid it is just run directly away from him. I found the only reasonable way to beat him was to bait him away from the Space Rider, wait for an attack, run up, hit him once or twice with the Katana, then back out. Using Quick Steps gives you a more forgiving timing window to get this down. If you run out of quick steps, you can run back to the food court and blend some more, but it does take a lot of time. When he's blowing balloons, do not pop them with melee attacks as it will stun you temporarily. Instead, try throwing something at him if there's something on hand, like a garbage can. I broke both a katana and a mannequin torso on him and then finished him off by throwing a garbage can at him. If you're going for a no-death playthrough, I do wish you luck because I firmly believe this to be one of the hardest parts in that. After the fight, however, we get access to the small chainsaws, which I think are the single best weapon in Dead Rising. They can kill multiple zombies in a single hit, and cut through psychopaths like they're nothing. Since your weapon's broke and small chainsaws are amazing, pick one up, then use the console. After the cutscene, another small chainsaw will be there, so pick that up as well. You'll now have Greg with you. Greg will only move when you're close to him, so you can use this to your advantage. Get as far away from him as possible and cut a path with the small chainsaws down the stairs towards the women's bathroom. Return to Greg periodically to get him to move forward. Near the bathrooms you have an opportunity to get a PP bonus photo of him when he calls you over. Follow him and he will unlock an incredibly useful shortcut of the women's bathroom in Wonderland Plaza to the bathrooms in Paradise Plaza. This will be very critical throughout the game as you won't have to deal with going through the park with the convicts or the long way around while escorting survivors through zombie hordes and it saves a lot of time and headache. Get him back to the security room by going through the warehouse. On your way into the security room, take a photograph of the duct entrance. Photograph of the duct entrance is required for rescuing a set of survivors later on. You can lock the photograph so it doesn't get overwritten by going into your menu and I strongly suggest that you do this. 
Again, standard setup here. Get the coffee creamers, recharge your batteries, mix quick steps, grab a katana. This time though, go through the shortcut to Wonderland Plaza after hearing Otis's scoop about the Japanese tourists. Backtrack the way you followed Greg and enter the bookstore on the second level. You'll need to pick up the Japanese book to converse with these guys. It's on the floor near the cash register at the front of the store. After a few dialogue boxes, talk to them again and take a picture of them bowing for more bonus PP. Give them each a katana if you can spare it and grab the criminal biography book in the back of the store, trading the now useless Japanese book for it if you don't have space. Tell them to wait in the store and go back for a small chainsaw. Get them down to the women's bathroom and take the shortcut back to Paradise Plaza, then head back to the security room via the warehouse. Enter the security room and you'll get a cutscene with Brad. Make sure you save. Grab coffee creamers for quick steps if you need to. Our current destination is the Shadow of the North Plaza scoop, so set your marker. Head to Paradise Plaza and take the shortcut in the women's bathroom on the ground floor. Go to the Space Rider console to get a new small chainsaw and then continue on to the North Plaza. Follow the arrow and enter one of the unfinished shops to find David. Talk to David and kill any zombies that wander in while you're talking to him. Eat the food there if you need some health, and take David with you to the hunting shack for a hidden scoop and psychopath battle. Leave David outside the hunting shack and clear any zombies. I used a queen here, but I'm going to suggest that you don't use a queen since it causes a bunch of neon leeches to come out of the zombies. After you clear all the zombies, open the hunting shack door and meet Cletus. Cletus isn't hard by any stretch. You can lock him into a pattern quite easily. If he shoots you, he drinks wine to celebrate. You can take this opportunity to photograph him if you want, but you can also use it to stunlock him. Run to the counter and slash him with a small chainsaw and eventually he'll counter you by throwing you away from the counter. Just charge him again and continue slashing, and he'll go down. The correct strategy here is to hide behind the displays and let him take two shots with you and then you can charge him while he's reloading. You should be strong enough at this point that you can just trade blows with him. Use a quick step if you're having problems or need to heal. I actually didn't need to. Now you'll want to make your way back to Paradise Plaza with David on your shoulder. It's faster to go through the park since we're too far from the shortcut to make use of it. Regardless, if you killed the convicts, they'll be back now. Just hug the left wall and you should be fine. Get back into Paradise Plaza, go upstairs, heal at the Columbian Rosemasters if you need it, and go down into the warehouse and back to the security room. Here you'll actually have a lot of time to kill before the next case starts at 6am. I had about 25 minutes of real time. You may have a bit more or less depending on how lucky you were with Psychopaths and Survivor AI. You can spend this time hunting down PP stickers around the mall if you want. I used this opportunity to pick up the engineering and entertainment books from Backman's Bookporium under the Columbian Rosemasters. The criminal biography, engineering, and entertainment books provide multiplicative bonuses to small chainsaws making them have 27 times durability. If you have these three books, you'll never really need to worry about weapons breaking again in Dead Rising. I spent the remainder of that 25 minutes taking erotic photos of Sophie for prestige points and running back to Cam's camera for more batteries. If you're going to do this, I suggest you pick up the Camera 1 book from Contemporary Reading in Paradise Plaza for the 25% bonus PP for photographs. However you choose to spend your time, be back in the security room in time for the image in the monitor case at 6am. Enter the security room to complete case 2-1, image in the monitor. You will immediately start case 2-2, rescue the professor. Sadly, this is the last opportunity for easy coffee creamers to make quick steps. From now on, to make them the easiest location is the food court by mixing two wines together. Your current objective is the entrance plaza for case 2-2. Otis will give you a message in the warehouse letting you know that the shutter is open so you can go directly there versus going the long way around like we did during the first cases. You'll have a second battle with Carlito here and this time he's got a sniper rifle. Head up the escalator to the second level and hide behind the corner on the right side. Use a quick step if you want and close the distance and start swinging. If he slams you with his rifle and runs away, you can take cover in one of the shops. I didn't need to, I just rushed him down because small chainsaws are overpowered. After the battle, you'll be teleported back to the security room, which is really convenient. Immediately turn around at this point and take photographs of Jessie. You can get 1000 PP erotic photographs of her by capturing her knees and breasts in frame. Save one of these 1000 PP photographs as it will be used for Kent's photo challenge scoop a little later. I took about 6 just for the prestige points. After that, the processing time is a bit too long and it's better to just move on. Now, our current objective is the North Plaza, specifically Sion's grocery store. 
The easiest way to get there is via the Wonderland Plaza shortcut. Use this as an opportunity to grab a fresh small chainsaw from the Space Rider if you need to. You can also take a quick detour to the food court to make some more quick steps since we will be fighting another psychopath here. You'll probably get a call from Otis around this time about a couple in a shoe store in Wonderland Plaza. Ignore them for now, we'll come back after we're done the case. After you're done, follow the arrow and head into Sion's grocery store. There are no zombies in here and the battle will only start once you've checked the door to the pharmacy. Use this as a free opportunity to heal using the food in the store. When you're ready, check the door. Steven can be an annoying psychopath because of his weapon cart and shotgun. I found the easiest way to deal with him is to run to the end of an aisle and bait him into charging you. Then when he's turning the cart at the end of the aisle, you go in the opposite direction around him and slice him with the small chainsaw. Try to hit him from the side if you can, as if you're directly behind him, he will mule kick you and send you flying. While he does the mule kick, you can get a photograph for bonus peepee, -pee, but it's really difficult to do so because of the positioning. If he does end up kicking you, run away and just repeat the same process of baiting him down a new aisle. He should go down in about 4 or 5 hits of the small chainsaw. After Steven's dead, head back to the pharmacy door and follow the path to pick up the first aid kit. Then head back out of Sion's and into the North Plaza. Set your marker for the Lover's Scoop and head back into Wonderland Plaza. You'll get another call from Otis about the Chryslips Hardware Store for the Scoop Hatchet Man. Head up the stairs to the right side and cleave through all the zombies up here using the small chainsaw. The more you kill, the easier the next part will be. Clear a path to the Space Rider and enter the Run Like the Wind shoe store on the right side. You'll have a really long conversation here with Tanya and Ross. You'll have to alternate talking between them. You won't have one more than likely, but Ross will ask you for a handgun. Under no circumstances give him one as he will kill himself and then Tanya will not come with you. Continue alternating talking to them and eventually they'll both join you. Give Tanya your small chainsaw because you have to carry Ross. Run back to the Space Rider console and pick up a fresh small chainsaw and then pick up Ross again. Work your way down to the women's bathroom shortcut, stopping and putting down Ross as needed to clear out any large groups of zombies for Tanya. If at any point you come across a queen while escorting Tanya and Ross, I strongly suggest you pick it up. It's worth it to pick up even if you have to throw away a book like Engineering or Entertainment for it, as it will make a part coming up significantly safer. Otis will call you about a scared man in Alfresca Plaza around here. Then use the shortcut in the women's bathroom to get back to Paradise Plaza. Now return to the warehouse, stopping to clear any large groups of zombies for Tanya. Go through the warehouse and up the elevator. Run Ross to the ledge, put him down, call him, then pick him up again once he climbs up the ledge on his own. Enter the security room and run inside to finish the medicine run case, and this is another good opportunity to save your game since things are going to be a little hectic at this next part. The timing for this part is a bit tighter than I'd like, but it should work out. There isn't a lot of time to do anything before the professor's past case, but there's an unlisted scoop in Paradise Plaza. Our current goal is to rescue Heather and Pamela. This part is much easier and safer with the queen, but you can use your small chainsaw if you have to. After entering Paradise Plaza, you'll hear Pamela being attacked by zombies. Run across to the toy store and use a queen if you have one, or just jump down into the pit and start swinging your chainsaw otherwise. Be careful not to hit Pamela as you can kill her quite easily. Talk to her after clearing out the zombies. Break the window with a jump kick, or swinging your chainsaw. Jump into the store through the broken window and talk to Pamela's twin sister, Heather. If you want to be really safe, tell them to wait in the toy store and then you can run up to the Colombian Roastmasters and grab some orange juice for Pamela if you damaged her. Return to the warehouse, and up to the security room. Save here. You'll have a bit of time to kill before you can finish this current case. It's worth sticking around and taking some photographs of the survivors until it's available. Then enter the security room and finish the case. The next case doesn't start for a while. Our current objective is the Chryslips hardware store in the North Plaza for the Hatchet Man scoop. Use this opportunity to mix a few nectars and grab a katana if your small chainsaw is running low or you have the inventory space. Head through the park and to the North Plaza hugging the right wall. You'll get a call from Otis around here about a man in Jill's sandwich shop. Ignore it for now. The entrance to Chryslips is on your right immediately after entering the North Plaza. You'll encounter the psychopath Clint here. The faster you kill Clint the better. If you have a leftover quick step it's useful to use it here. Clint has a nasty habit of running away and diving under the floor. You can take your picture of him while he's jumping into a hole for some bonus PP but it's hard to do. Otherwise nothing has changed about our psychopath strategy. Get close, mash attack with a small chainsaw. Clint will jump on racks through Chryslips so you'll need to jump up there yourself or throw something at him to get him to come down. There are a lot of construction items like sledgehammers and lead pipes that can be used from the racks. Clint is probably one of the harder psychopaths due to his mobility.
Once you beat him, you'll get the empty store key, grab Clint's machete, it's one of the better weapons but not quite on the small chainsaw level, and leave Chrysalips. Immediately head right and use the key to open the empty store. There are three survivors in here, Josh, Barbara, and Rich. Get them to join you, arm one of them with a machete and give the others some 2x4s you can pick up on the way to the exit to Leisure Park. Run back to Paradise Plaza and take your small posse to the eternal safety of Columbia Roastmasters and tell them to wait. You should be here just in time for Kent's photography scoop. Talk to him and show him the erotic photo you took of Jesse. You'll complete the scoop and you'll get a new scoop based around Kent, but it's a ways down the line. Tell your posse to wait again and grab a pie from Columbia Roastmasters. Head down the stairs to Jill's sandwich shop. My inventory was full here, so I jump kicked the window on the left side to get in, and then you gotta talk to Ronald. He'll want food, so hand him the pie you just picked up. Take a photo of him after he eats for a 10,000 PP bonus and destroy the barricade. Get Ronald to follow you, meet up with everyone at Columbia Roastmasters, and then head to the warehouse and to the security room like you've done a bunch of times before. Immediately leave the security room and head back down to Paradise Plaza. You should encounter a cutscene involving a cult in raincoats. Slaughter them all with your small chainsaw. They should die in one to two hits. Make sure you kill them after you hit them once, since they can pull out dynamite and suicide bomb you. These guys provide 500 pp a kill, which is one of the only reasonable ways to level up via murdering people in Dead Rising. From now on, every time you see a group of cultists, it is worth it to kill them all. After you clear the cultists, rescue Jennifer. Unfortunately, you can't give Jennifer a weapon. Head the much safer route to the second level and head for the entrance plaza. Pass through the entrance plaza and into El Fresca Plaza. Run to the store on the left side with the orange juice and tell Jennifer to wait inside. I found this to be a bit safer since you'll have to carve through a lot of zombies and cult members in here. Cleave through El Fresca Plaza and make sure to kill the two sets of cult members, then enter the hardware store. Find Gordon at the back of the store, behind the checkout counter. You'll have to talk to him once, then pick up the box and throw it at him, then talk to him again and he'll join up. Get him to follow you over the counter, pick up a lead pipe and give it to him as a weapon. It may seem appealing to go through the food court to get some quick steps and take the Wonderland Plaza shortcut, but don't do that. There is an unlisted scoop that you need to do immediately and we don't have time before the next case starts. Run back through El Fresco Plaza, pick up Jennifer and return to the entrance plaza. Then again head through the entrance plaza to Paradise Plaza. You should get a call from Otis about seeing Isabella in the monitors while in Paradise Plaza. Continue on and go through the warehouse and into the security room and be sure to start the next case. You should have a lot of time to do both the girl hunting and above the law scoops. I'm going to prioritize above the law specifically because survivors can die if you take too long to get here, so it's best to do it right now. I'm going to suggest that you bring some raw orange juice to heal survivors if you have the inventory space. It can be very useful after the next psychopath battle. Jump down and head to the Wonderland Plaza shortcut via the women's washrooms. After arriving in Wonderland Plaza, you'll want to head left and you'll hear screaming. There are two survivors hanging onto the giant bunny statue. Take a photograph for a PP bonus, then run towards them and use queens underneath them to easily clear out the zombies. Clean up any stragglers with your small chainsaw. To get them down, you need to throw something weak at them. You can either use a book or a chunk of meat or a queen that the zombies dropped. Talk to both of them and get them to join you. Now you want to head up the stairs and into the women's clothing store on the right side. Here you'll encounter the psychopath Joe. Joe herself is actually very easy, but the one thing you need to keep in mind is collateral damage. You can just run in and slice her to ribbons with a small chainsaw, but it's likely you'll hit K or another survivor. At the beginning of the fight, try and bait her away from the survivors and continue to slice her up. She should go down very easily, arguably the easiest of all psychopaths in the game. Then take everyone down to the women's washroom shortcut. This is a really frustrating experience because the already clumsy AI is even worse while in groups. You may have to use the shortcuts and go back a few times to get everyone in. After entering Paradise Plaza, I got another call from Otis about snipers in the entrance plaza. We're gonna ignore it for now, but it's an opportunity to get the 8 survivors achievement. Take the survivors to the security room via the warehouse. Get as many survivors in through the duct as possible, but don't worry if it takes 2 or 3 attempts to get everyone in because it probably will. Now it's time to turn your attention to the snipers. So head down the elevator, through the warehouse, then take a left in Paradise Plaza to reach the entrance plaza. I took a detour to the right to kill the cultists and stock up on some nectars from Colombian Roastmasters. I got a call from Otis here about a woman in the entrance plaza. That's really convenient since we're headed there anyways. Once you're done, leave Paradise Plaza and enter the entrance plaza. 
You'll get a cutscene here. These guys are actually one of the easier sets of psychopaths. The encounter is actually very similar to Carlito with the sniper rifle, the only there's three of them and they're not quite as strong. If you have a quick step, you can use it now to run them down. If not, just close the distance and swing at them with your small chainsaw whenever you get close enough. Prioritize killing the father as he's the most dangerous, then you can focus on the sons. It should be a very easy encounter regardless. Once they're all dead, head for the women's cosmetics store on the top floor and talk to Wayne. Once Wayne joins you, head downstairs to the grandma's kids store on the right side and talk to Jolie. Talk to Jolie until she stops talking to you and then try to leave the store and she will follow you. Now go back upstairs and head for the ladies space store. I got a call from Otis just before I entered ladies space about Ronald being hungry. You'll need to grab some food for him. I grabbed a bag of chips from the store on the left of Lady Space. If you can't find anything, you can just tell your posse to wait by the warehouse door once you get back to Paradise Plaza and then you go grab a pie from Colombian Roastmasters. Once you're done that, enter Lady Space with Jolie. Jolie will be reunited with Rachel and you can take their photo for bonus PP. After they're done talking, talk to Rachel and get her to join up with you. Then you want to cross to the other side of the second level of the entrance plaza and enter Ned's Knickknackery. Talk to Floyd for what seems like ages until he finally decides to join you. You can carry Floyd, but he does alright on his own in short spurts. You can grab a battle axe here for Wayne if you want, but it's not needed. Now you want to take the four of them back to the security room, so go downstairs and enter Paradise Plaza. Then do the standard route of taking them to the security room through the warehouse. Enter the security room and hunt down Ronald. Talk to him and then give him the pie or the bag of chips. The mutiny will be averted and you'll get 10,000 PP for your trouble. Use this as an opportunity to take some photographs of survivors for extra PP while the conversation's going on. Now it's finally time to go after Isabella. Exit the security room and head for the North Plaza. I used the Wonderland Plaza shortcut and went back to the Space Rider for a refresh of a small chainsaw and some quick steps with a small detour to the food court. This is one of the only times in the game where a gun can be useful. You may want to go through Paradise Plaza to stock up on nectars from Columbia Roastmasters, then into Leisure Park and then to the North Plaza to the Hunting Shack to grab a shotgun or two as an alternative. Pick your route and head to Sion's in the North Plaza. Isabella is not a terribly difficult psychopath, but she is annoying because she's fast and on a motorcycle. She went down really easily, it took me three hits with a small chainsaw. What you need to be aware of is once the battle starts, you cannot leave the area. If you leave the area by entering Sion's, for instance, if you need food to heal, she will run away and you'll lose out on the rest of the cases in the game. I found the most effective strategy was just to get her to charge you, and then you can use your superior turn radius to get beside her and slice her with the small chainsaw. Like I said, she goes down in like three hits, so it should be pretty easy. After Isabella is taken care of, she asks you to meet her in the next case at midnight. I structured this walkthrough so that you shouldn't have a lot of time here. I just ran around in Sion's for about 10 minutes with the weapon cart and then I got a call from Otis. Try to be in Sion's at midnight as you'll want to hear Otis's call telling you to meet Isabella. Once you've taken the call, re-enter the North Plaza and run to Isabella. Around here, you'll also get a call from Otis about the raincoat cult in the movie theater. You should encounter Kindle on the way. He'll shoot at you, but if you just keep running towards him and talk to him, he'll join up. Then go through the door beside him and find Isabella. A zombie will attack her in a cutscene. I just jumped and did a roundhouse kick. It's easy enough to perform, you just mash attack as you're landing. It should go off and you should kick the zombie right off of Isabella. Now you need to get Isabella and Kindle back to the security room. It's easy enough, and you should know the way at this point. You'll have to carry Isabella, but that's not a huge deal. Put her down if there are ever too many zombies for you and Kindle to easily run through. Just cleave them apart with your small chainsaw. Once you get back to the security room, you won't have a lot of time until the next case. The case Santa Cabeza is worth noting because it can lock out some achievements. If you do not complete Santa Cabeza, Dr. Barnaby, Jesse, and Brad will live, but you will not be able to rescue Simone Ravendark. Failing this case is actually one of the only ways to get the Saint achievement as Frank, Brad, Jesse, Isabella, and Dr. Barnaby do count towards the survivors at the end for the achievement. If you don't do Santa Cabeza, you also lock out the transmissionary achievement since you need to get Simone back to the security room and fulfill her request. Now that you know that, you can make a separate file if you wish. I don't actually know if you can do it on 360 or PC. Back on track, this guide rescues Simone Ravendark and does all the cases to unlock overtime mode so we can just keep following along. Leave the security room and set your marker for a strange group. These are the raincoat cultists at the movie theater in Paradise Plaza. You'll want to head there now. You can do a detour for Nectars and a Katana by stopping by Colombian Roastmasters if you wish. At the movie theater, follow the arrow and cleave through the cultists in your way. Progress through the theater. We want to head for theater number four. It will be blocked by a lot of cultists, so show them your appreciation for their free PP by slicing them to ribbons. You'll encounter a psychopath here. He's one of the more difficult ones as he's quite fast and his attacks are damaging and they throw you. 
If you have a quick step, it would be worth using here. Otherwise, you'll have to bait his attacks and move back into counter just like with Adam the Clown. Standard stuff. Hit him with a small chainsaw until he dies. You should probably be able to trade blows with him. I was pretty high level when I got here. After he dies, a lot of cultists will flood into the theater. Slaughter them all with your small chainsaw. After that, unlock the door at the bottom of the theater to free Cheryl. It's easy to forget about Cheryl, but make sure you get her out since she's required for the transmissionary achievement as well. Once she's joined, free Ray, Nathan, Michelle, and Beth. You can pick up the ceremonial sword and give it to one of the survivors. You can also pick up the brainwashing tips book, which makes survivors more aggressive, which is kind of exactly hard to quantify, but it seems to be helpful. On the way back, you'll get a call from Otis about Floyd asking for wine. This is actually a subtle hint of where to go next. You'll also get another call from Otis about Isabella waking up, so you should head back to the security room now. Go back to Paradise Plaza, the warehouse, and finally back into the security room. Enter the security room. You should be right on time to complete Santa Cabeza. Now is the best time to fulfill Floyd's request and get some wine. Leave the security room and head for the food court. I went through Paradise Plaza and Leisure Park, but if you prefer you can go through the Wonderland Plaza shortcut. It should be about the same time. After entering the food court, head to Chris's Fine Foods. You'll encounter Gil who's drinking by the wine. Make sure you grab at least one bottle of wine for Floyd and start talking to Gil. You have a pee pee opportunity here, so be ready to take his picture. After he stops saying anything, attempt to leave and I'll ask you if you're serious about the rescue. You'll need to give him a shoulder, which is honestly the easiest way to transport survivors in Dead Rising, which is a nice change after a group of five survivors from the movie theater. Head for the shortcut in Wonderland Plaza, then through Paradise Plaza, and then to the warehouse and security room like you'd done a dozen times before. Once you're back in the security room, hunt down Floyd. Give him the bottle of wine for 10,000 PP for fulfilling his request. As with all these requests, there's a lot of dialogue, so I like to kill the time by taking pictures for some extra PP. You're gonna want to save your game while you're here. There's no listed scoops for now, but we actually need to head to the hunting shack in the North Plaza. After you leave the security room, if you haven't already, make sure to take a picture of the air duct and save it as you will need to use it now. Once you get into the warehouse, you'll get a call from Otis about a long-haired punk. We're gonna ignore it for now. Then head to the North Plaza. I went through Paradise Plaza, Leisure Park, and then into the North Plaza. The current objective is the Hunting Shack. Once you get to the Hunting Shack, try to enter and you'll be shot at, so leave. One of the survivors will come to talk to you, but do not enter the Hunting Shack again as they are still hostile and they will keep shooting at you. Talk to the survivor until he asks for the photo and Frank should automatically show it to him. The group will then join up. The girl is only equipped with a handgun. I didn't bother in my playthrough, but I believe you can give her a shotgun. Just grab one from the racks in the hunting shack. She was problematic as she got stuck a lot, so be aware of that. It may be worthwhile to pick up a shotgun yourself here for the next section. You can also trade something useless to one of these survivors once you get back to the roof. You're gonna want to head back to the security room via Leisure Park in Paradise Plaza again. After getting that group back, set your marker to the long-haired punk scoop. There is still a little while before the last resort case, so it's the best time to do it. Here, I strongly suggest going to Columbian Roastmasters and getting the following items. Mix a nectar and immediately use it for a queen. One plain orange juice, which is very high priority. One katana if you can spare the inventory space. Then jump down from Columbian Roastmasters and head into the shortcut in the women's washrooms. You can get a refresh of your small chance out the space rider if you wish. If you can keep the damaged one, do that as well. Then go back down to ground level and enter the casual gals clothing store, where you'll encounter the psychopath Paul. Paul I was able to consistently kill before he even ran out of the store. Three times in a row I just ran towards him and was able to mash attack to take him down. I'll show some footage from another playthrough if he manages to get away from you. I would strongly suggest a quick step here as Paul is kind of hard to catch if he runs away. The only thing you can do here is run him down while avoiding the molotovs he's throwing behind him. You can try throwing something at him or shooting him with a gun if you took one from the hunting shack or the group of survivors. But as you can see, the fight is basically the same regardless. Once you catch him, you just keep swinging and he goes down. After the fight, take a photograph of Paul while he's burning for some bonus PP. Then grab the fire extinguisher behind him and use it to put out the flames. After that's all done, talk to Paul until he joins you. Immediately give him the orange juice to refill his health to full and give him a weapon if you can spare it. Then open the closet and talk to the two girls to get them to join you as well. Exit casual gals and head right into the playground to see an old woman on the soccer ball. Use the queen you got from the nectar or hack them to pieces with your chainsaw. Talk to her once the zombies are cleared and she'll join you. Now directly in front of you is Fine Lady Cosmetics where Leroy is. Run everyone over there and talk to him. He'll join up eventually. Give him whatever you have on hand. I just gave him a lipstick prop from the store because that's all I could find. Now you want to cut your way to the women's washroom shortcut and head back to Paradise Plaza. Susan can be a problem because she often gets left behind. You can use the hold hands option but it feels unreliable at best. 
Regardless, you'll have to babysit Susan while heading back to the security room from Paradise Plaza in the warehouse. Once they're all back, you can rejoice. That was actually the last large group of survivors in Dead Rising. If you still have the World News Book and the Brainwashing Tips book, now is a great time to get rid of them. There are only two more survivors to rescue, so you'll only get minimal benefit out of the book. It's still worth it to hang on to it if you can spare the inventory, as these final survivors are worth quite a bit. You'll have a bit of time here to kill. I had about 10 real-time minutes. This is a prime opportunity to restock on things like quick steps, get a fresh small chainsaw, or maybe grab a queen or two. Regardless, you have to be back at the security room before the last resort case expires. During your milling about, you'll get a call from Otis about Isabella wanting to see you, so head back to the security room. Enter the security room to finish the last resort case, and you'll immediately start Bomb Collector. Bomb Collector may seem like a really high priority because the mall will blow up if your time runs out, but don't panic, there are some things we have to do first. Leave the security room and enter the warehouse. Isabella will call you about the bombs in the maintenance tunnels. Enter Paradise Plaza. The first thing you need to do is the final part of Kent's storyline, the photographer's pride scoop. You can set your marker or you can just head to Columbian Roastmasters on the second floor of Paradise Plaza as you should be intimately familiar with it at this point. You'll have a bit of time to kill here. You can mix some drinks if you want. You may want to delay a little bit because you'll get a call from Otis about Kindle trying to organize an escape. I just waited in Columbian Roastmasters and answered Otis's call immediately after starting the battle with Kent. Kent can be hard because his flying jump kick can deal a lot of damage. It's about 4 bars and it throws you a fair distance. However, you should probably be at least in your mid 40s at this point with a small chainsaw. Kent should die in about 3 or 4 hits. Just abuse the wall in the orange juice cooler if you need to heal and then trade blows with him. If Kent knocks you out, it's probably better to just reset since you'll have to fight him unarmed which is a lot more difficult. After the battle, you can take a photo of Kent's corpse and then rescue Tad. Kent also drops the camera 2 book which doubles the PP gain from photographs. This is worth picking up if you can spare the inventory space. It'll help you reach level 50 a bit faster as there are a few sections coming up which are dedicated to taking photographs. You don't need to grab it right now as it'll always be here from now on. Make sure to recharge your batteries at Cam's camera on the way back to the warehouse. Enter the warehouse, and you'll get a call from Otis about a woman in Paradise Plaza. Head back to the security room with Tad. Now you need to go and talk to Kindle to prevent him from leaving with a good chunk of your hard-earned survivors. The conversation is pretty long, so while he's talking I like to take photographs of the survivors in the room. That's just PP efficiency. Once the mutiny is averted, collect your 10,000 bonus PP, then head for the woman in this spare scoop, which is down the elevator, through the warehouse, and into Paradise Plaza. Immediately head right, but stay on the left side. You can cut through the toy store to the player's CD store and you'll find Simone by the racks. Talk to Simone. If you've been following this guide, you'll have completed Santa Capeza, and she'll join you after talking to her for a while about Isabella. If you didn't complete Santa Capeza, Simone won't join you and she is simply unsafable. After she joins, head back to the security room through the warehouse. If you still have brainwashing tips or the world news book, you're completely done with them now. Throw them away and take back those two valuable inventory slots. Now it's finally time to take on Carlito's bombs. I strongly suggest saving here as this part is probably the single hardest part in Dead Rising and because of all the extra survivor things we had to do, there's even less time than normal. Head back down to Paradise Plaza. Now would be a great time to mix some untouchables at Columbian Roastmasters. The combination is pie and orange juice. These heal you and prevent you from being grabbed by zombies for a while. If you don't want untouchables, filling your inventory with nectars would be a good idea as well. Jump down, exit Paradise Plaza, and straight through Leisure Park into the parking lot. Here you'll find a car and a motorcycle. The car looks more appealing, but take the motorcycle. Carlito has placed a barricade in the maintenance tunnels which the car cannot get through. Enter the maintenance tunnels. You'll have to use your map a lot here. The maintenance tunnels aren't confusing, but the compass can be very unreliable. Immediately after entering, you'll want to head right, and then take the first left. You'll want to skip the next right as it leads to a dead end, and take the second right. After the tunnel turns left, take the immediate right. Head down this way until the tunnel turns left again. Keep going and you'll find a truck with a bomb in it. Dismount your motorcycle and grab the bomb. Get back on if you can. Turn around and head back the way you came. As a little added bonus here, Carlito will come after you in a truck. He's annoying to say the least. He'll chase you until you take him out. Try to avoid him until you get to the second bomb. Take the left path and head straight until you reach the second van. Carlito will definitely catch up to you at this point. The easiest way to hit him is to get him to crash into the wall and slice him with a chainsaw. Try to get as many hits as you can, but he'll most likely run away. He also probably smashed into your motorcycle, which makes this part even more annoying. 
I used a quick step here to speed up the process, otherwise use queens in areas with high concentrations of zombies or carve through using your small chainsaw. General tips for this entire section, grab any queens that you see here as they will make this part way safer and easier. Anytime you see a shopping cart, you should use it since it's way faster than walking. Pro tips with the shopping cart, try to avoid hitting other shopping carts as it will crash. Carlito will drive off and attempt to ram you. Try to bait him into crashing into a wall then take a hit or two on him. The faster you kill Carlito the better since dealing with the zombies and Carlito is not a good experience. You'll want to head the exact same way you went before, straight down this tunnel. After the left bend, take a right. I managed to kill Carlito here which is both convenient and inconvenient. It can teleport you a fair distance depending on where you are. I had to head straight and turn left to get back into the tunnel I was at before. Then you're going to want to turn right and continue straight until you hit the ring. Take a left and grab the bomb from the third van. Head back the way you came, taking another left through the roundabout. Go forward for a bit and then take a right turn. Head straight and take the left after the tunnel kinks a bit. Head towards the van and grab the fourth bomb. Head back and take a left at the T-junction. Now it's just a straight shot to the last van and the final bomb. Just run straight ahead, preferably with a shopping cart. This final stretch has a huge concentration of zombies, so be prepared to use any queens you have or carve through with a small chainsaw. If you mixed an untouchable, now is a great time to use it. Head to the end of the parking lot and grab the final bomb from the van. You'll get a call from Isabella about the bombs and she tells you to get outside. Now run to the other van and get inside. Drive through the tunnel until you find the barricade on the right side. Just get close to it and you should get a cutscene. Pat yourself on the back because you're effectively finished dead rising at this point. There's only a few more things to do and it's largely just going back and forth from A to B. You've got a bit of time to kill before the next case. You can head back to the maintenance tunnels to find a zombified Brad. You can take his picture for the achievement Snuff Shot B, but I didn't bother. I messed around in the tunnels for a bit, and then I headed back to the safe room. Once you've done all that, head back to Paradise Plaza. I took a detour to the Colombian Roastmasters to stock up on nectars and grab the camera 2 book from Kent's final resting place. You should get a call around here about Jesse being worried, immediately after I got a call about Paul wanting to talk to me. After filling your inventory with nectars, head back to the security room. Enter the security room and finish the jamming device case, you'll immediately start the next case, hideout. Before we leave the security room, hunt down Paul. Talk to him to fulfill his request and you'll get your 10,000 PP and access to unlimited molotovs. These aren't super useful, but they can be fun. As always while fulfilling requests, make sure to take pictures of the survivors while the conversation's going on. Exit the security room and escort Isabella to Carlito's hideout. Carlito's hideout is by the hunting shack in the North Plaza. Leave the warehouse, cut through Paradise Plaza, go through Leisure Park, and enter the North Plaza. Head to the hunting shack, but take a left just before you get there to enter an empty store. Inside, jump on the boxes, and once Isabella catches up to you, you'll get a cutscene and enter Carlito's hideout. Move forward and talk to Isabella. You'll immediately start Case 8-3, Jesse's Discovery. Exit Carlito's hideout. You'll want to make a very quick detour and pick up a handgun from the hunting shack as we'll need it shortly. Now head back to the security room through the North Plaza, Leisure Park, and Paradise Plaza. In Paradise Plaza I got a call from Otis about bringing Simone a handgun. You should already have one because you picked one up in the hunting shack. I did another brief detour here to pick up the Camera 1 book from the bookstore across from the door to the warehouse. Once you're done, head through the warehouse and back up to the security room. Enter the security room to start the Butcher case. Head inside and find Simone. Give her the handgun to complete a request, snapping photos of the survivors while the dialogue runs. Save your game. Now that was about an hour real time, and normally I'd cut the video, but this next part is actually quite short, so I'll just finish it out. Leave the security room, head through Paradise Plaza, into Leisure Park, head towards the maintenance tunnels. I got a call from Otis about Cheryl at this point. Then jump in the car since the barrier is gone and head into the maintenance tunnels. Turn left and follow the path to where you found the final bomb and enter the double doors to encounter Larry the Butcher. I was level 47 at this point and I seriously just traded blows with him. Start the battle swinging and if he grabs you, you just mash buttons until you fall down again, then keep swinging and you'll be victorious. Now you'll get Carlito's locket. You have until 10 until the final case, so it's time to fulfill Cheryl's request. 
leave the butcher shop and get in the truck on the right side. Drive out of the maintenance tunnels and drive through Leisure Park into Paradise Plaza. If you haven't, pick up the camera one and two books from Colombian Roastmasters in the bookstore across from the warehouse door. Also make sure to stop by Cam's camera for more batteries as well since we will need them. Enter the security room and find Cheryl. She wants you to photograph her. Just take as many pictures as you want. This is kind of your reward for an all survivors playthrough. You'll have a bit of time to kill before memories is available. Run around taking pictures, killing zombies, or doing whatever you feel like. Whatever you choose to do with your time, be back at the entrance to Carlito's hideout for the memories case at 10. Wait outside until you get a call from Isabella, then enter Carlito's hideout. Complete the final case by giving Carlito's locket to Isabella. Now all that's left to do is some back and forth. Your current goal is the security room. I took a detour, grabbed a bunch of wine, and ran to Colombian Roastmasters to make six quick steps just to speed this part up a bit. Run back to the security room to find it's totally abandoned. Otis stole a helicopter and got everyone out. Inside you can snap a photograph of Zombie Jesse for the Snuff Shot J achievement. Now that that's finished, it's time to run back to Carlito's hideout. Talk to Isabella and then just kinda chill out. Realistically, you can use this time to do whatever you want. I just went AFK in Carlito's hideout for about 50 minutes. You can do preparations for overtime mode here. Things like getting to level 50, photographing the rest of the PP stickers in the mall, gathering as many queens as you can, but it's easy enough to do in overtime mode. After about 50 minutes, you'll get a cutscene. Talk to Isabella and she'll say she's gonna stay here. Now head back to the security room. Head back to the security room, exit up the stairs to the helipad and wait for your flight out of here. It took about 8 minutes of real time waiting. I used it to practice Frank's special moves like the somersault kick which will be useful in overtime mode. One thing to note here is that if you want to start overtime mode with all your current items, you need to start it immediately, otherwise you will start with nothing. Overtime mode is unique because while you have a 24 hour time limit, you can complete the steps as fast as you want, unlike in the main game. I'm going to be doing this guide as if I started overtime mode new, with no items, but starting at level 50. I'm going to take some influences from the Dead Rising Overtime Mode speedrun, which is pretty cool to watch, you can find some links in the description. Just like the main game, I'm going to emphasize safety, which will result in a significantly slower time, but should get everyone through. Overtime mode is actually very simple, you have four main objectives. Your first task is to gather equipment for Isabella. The equipment Isabella needs all count as key items, so it doesn't take up any inventory space, and that means we can go through and get them all in one fell swoop. If you've got small chainsaws and items from playing through the All Survivors playthrough, you can just head to Colombian Roastmasters in Paradise Plaza now. I'm gonna make some detours. The mall is now crawling with special forces which can easily kill you. Leave Carlito's hideout and head right. Your current destination is Ripper's Blades, which is right next to Sion's grocery store. Pick up the 2x4 from the empty store on your right side, then head up the ramp onto the scaffolding and pick up the lead pipe. Use the scaffolding along the walls to avoid special forces. If a drone gets in your way, hit it with the lead pipe or jump kick it. Pick up the milk and baguette on your way and keep moving forward. Jump down and enter Ripper's Blades. Use the lead pipe to knock down the special forces in here and break the glass with the katanas on the left side. Grab a katana from the rack and kill the special forces guy here. It should be about two hits. You can also use Frank's disembowel move which should be a one hit kill. I was having trouble pulling it off so I developed the katana strategy since I found it to be more reliable. After he's dead, grab a lot of katanas. I grabbed five. Then head south into Wonderland Plaza. Head right and up the stairs into the bookstore. Run to the back of the store and grab the criminal biography book. This increases the durability of your katanas by three times. Leave the bookstore, jump over the railing and enter the women's washrooms to take the shortcut to Paradise Plaza. You can save in here if you want. Exit the washrooms and head into Sport Trance on the ground floor. Use the stairs in the back of the store to sneak up on the Special Forces soldier. Hit him twice with the katana to kill him. Grab a skateboard from the racks that he was looking at. There are a few more special forces up there, kill them with a katana, and then grab some orange juices from the cooler. Heal yourself to full, then fill your inventory with orange juices. Get rid of the 2x4 and the lead pipe if you still have them. Next to the orange juice cooler on the left, you can grab the blender. Run back into Spar Trance and grab the cold spray, it should be right next to the entrance. Ride the skateboard, and head downstairs and into Cam's camera. At the back of the store, jump over the counter and grab the developing solution. Leave Cam's camera, turn left, and enter the warehouse. This is one of the more difficult areas as there are a lot of special forces here. You can kill them if you want or avoid them by going past them on your skateboard. It's your call. I killed them, but I almost died doing so. On the roof, heal up, then head back to the security room through the air duct. Enter the security room and grab the coffee filters next to the red boom box. The door to the security room isn't welded shut anymore. Use that door, hop onto the skateboard, and enter the entrance plaza. 
Head down the stairs and stick to the left side. Enter Sports High and grab the camp stove from the shelves. Kill the two or three special forces on your tail or get away from them using the skateboard. Head towards Paradise Plaza, but go up the escalator at the end. At the top, enter Estelle Fine Lady Cosmetics. Kill the special forces here and grab the perfume bottle from the center display. Get back on the skateboard, head down the escalator, and into Paradise Plaza. Go into the first store on your left, Contemporary Reading. Grab the weekly photo book. This will be useful in one of the upcoming sections in overtime mode. Afterwards, head for the women's washrooms and take the shortcut to Wonderland Plaza. In Wonderland Plaza, it's another opportunity to save if you wish. Head outside and to the left to enter Wonder Jewels on the bottom floor. Run to the back of the store and grab the magnifying glass. Exit Wonder Jewels, hop on your skateboard and head left towards the North Plaza. Enter the North Plaza. Your next destination is Sion's Grocery, head north and enter it. Sion's is also dangerous because it's crawling with special forces. I used hit and run tactics to kill isolated groups of one or two of them. You can retreat behind the coolers and grab healing items from around the store. You don't have to kill these guys, but it makes it a bit easier. Afterwards, head to the pharmacy between the seafood and meat counter. Go all the way down and grab the first aid kit. Then backtrack the way you came. I suggest refilling your inventory with orange juices here. Exit Sion's and enter the North Plaza. You now have everything you need. Hop on your skateboard or the motorcycle and head back to Carlito's hideout. Talk to Isabella and start the second part of overtime mode. You can save on the rug here if you wish. Exit Carlito's hideout and head for Leisure Park. Once you're outside, you'll notice the weekly photo magazine will be giving you PP badges above the zombies' heads. You want to be on the lookout for green PP badges. Green badges will indicate that those zombies have queens. Kill any greens you see and grab the queens, discarding katanas or healing items for them. Now head to the clock tower, which is in the center of Leisure Park. You'll get a cutscene showing that there's a tunnel under the clock tower. Afterwards, head around to the breaker panel and grab the generator. Head back to Isabella by re-entering the North Plaza, then taking a right at the sign indicating the hunting shack. After talking to Isabella, you'll be tasked with gathering 10 queens. Hand in any queens you found on the way. I was able to grab two. Save again if you feel like it, then head back outside to Leisure Park. There are no more zombies out here, so head towards the maintenance tunnels. You'll be shot at by the helicopter, so hopefully you still have some healing items from Sion's. Get to the parking lot and get in the car, and enter the maintenance tunnels. Keep an eye out for any green PP badges, drive over them, get out, grab the queen, and get back in the car. There are large concentrations of zombies down here, so it shouldn't take long to get the 10 queens. Discard anything you have at this point, the queens are the priority. Keep the weekly photo book until you get the 10th queen, then it's safe to discard it as well. Make sure you keep count, it's preferable to only do this part once. Getting a few extra queens doesn't hurt, since they can be useful for the final part of overtime mode. Once you have 10 total, including how many you handed in at the beginning, exit the maintenance tunnels. I swapped to the fresh car and headed back to the North Plaza. Run back to Carlito's hideout and give Isabella the queens. You can speed up this process by running away from her as it actually skips some dialogue boxes if you want. I gave her 9, saved, and then went for a quick supply run. This is totally optional, but it is safer. I went back to Ripper's Blades and grabbed some more katanas, and I went back into Sion's for more orange juice. The tunnel escape is designed to be completed with nothing, but it never hurts to be prepared. Whatever you choose to do, get back to Isabella and give her the 10th queen. You'll be immediately taken to the tunnels. You can save here if you want, and then move forward. This part is annoying because of the clunkiness of the hold hands option with Isabella. Just take it slow, grab Isabella's hand, and walk forward. You'll come to a closed off gate, you need to go to the left side and open the other gate with Isabella, and she'll go through. You're on your own for a bit and you need to fend off zombies. You can use Frank's double lariat, the wall kick, jump kicks, and knee drops. If you have an extra queen, it's recommended to use it here. Otherwise, just buy time until Isabella gets the door open. Once she does, go back to holding hands and navigate through the maze area until you reach the door. You can technically just carve through if you have weapons, but I think holding hands is actually faster. Just continue forward and you'll eventually reach another gate you have to get Isabella through on the left side. The same tactics apply here, just survive until Isabella gets the door open. Once she does, you can just run forward with or without her and you'll exit the area. This is your final opportunity to save and it's recommended to do so. 
Afterwards, jump down and carry Isabella. Go left and up the stairs, put Isabella down and pull the lever. Pick up Isabella again, head down the stairs and put her down next to the jeep and get inside. Now you'll have a classic Capcom rail shooter segment. This is actually really easy, just focus on the two glowing green lights above the treads and you should be fine. You can shoot the targeting laser that pops up on the top and the drones that come out but you really don't need to. The tank actually whiffs quite a few of its cannon shells and hits terrain, and the drones aren't particularly threatening and often just run into your bullets anyways. If you're level 50, you can just trade blows with the tank. You get a health refresh afterwards so don't worry too much about it, just focus on the weak points above the treads. Once that's done, you'll have the final battle in Dead Rising. You're unfortunately stripped of everything you have here, including weapons and healing items. I strongly suggest opening the pause menu and looking at Frank's skill set to see how to execute his special moves if you aren't familiar with using them. Brock can be easy, but I find this fight to be quite annoying. The speedrun kills Brock in about 5 seconds by chaining together somersault and judo kicks. If you can do this, fantastic. I actually found it to be really difficult to pull off somersault kicks here for some reason. My strategy involves chaining jump kicks into judo kicks, then running away and repeating that process. Standard punches are very ineffective against Brock, so try to avoid using them. If you ever fall off the tank, Frank's double lariat is the way to clear the zombies around you, then you can safely jump back onto the tank. The double lariat is also really useful for whittling down Brock's HP while he blocks, and it can chunk him pretty severely if he walks into it. You kinda just need to know Frank's special moves here. I've never actually lost to Brock, so it shouldn't be terribly difficult. If you do lose, just go back to your save file, redo the final section with Isabella and the rail shooter against the tank, and you'll get another attempt. It should only take a few minutes to redo that section, although it will be quite annoying. Otherwise, congratulations, you just beat Overtime Mode in Dead Rising. Infinity Mode should now be unlocked. 